The next presentation is going to be a study of antimolarian hormones and their relationship with subsequent probability of pregnancy of 112 uh, systemic lupus patients exposed or not to cyclophosphamide. This is presented by Dr. Morel from the Petit Salpetier Hospital of France. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm pleased to present you this work and I have no disclosure. So, as you all know, cyclophosphamide is a treatment for severe manifestations of SLD and has a risk of premature ovarian failure, mainly linked to the age of the patients and the cumulative dose of cyclophosphamide. The anti-Mullerian hormone, I will say AMH, it's easier for a French. So, AMH reflects ovarian reserve and it has been shown that when the level is below two nanograms per milliliter, the rate of infertility may increase. In healthy females, you, uh, the AMH peaks at an age of 24 years with a mean of five nanograms per milliliter and then declines until menopause with a level of two at age 40, the same level. Five studies have focused on AMH in SLE women. Their mixed results have shown first that SLE women have lower level of AMH than in the general population. And second, they have shown that the level of AMH decreased after exposure to cyclophosphamide. But no study have, re have been regarding to the probability of pregnancy. So, Given these results, AMH has been proposed, quite logically, as a biomarker of cyclophosphamide-induced ovarian damage, and, the and it has been proposed to use these levels to guide the treatment choices and to counsel the family regarding their, their family planning decisions in SLE patients. So we did our study to s evaluate this proposition. The objectives of our study were to assess AMH serum levels in a large cohort of SLD patients, to compare these levels between patients exposed or not to cyclophosphamide, and to analyze the subsequent probability of pregnancy. This was an ancillary study of the PLUS study that we published last year, which was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study aimed at evaluating the interest of adapting daily dose of hydroxychloroquine to its blood concentration. Briefly, relevant inclusion criteria were adult SLD patients treated with hydroxychloroquine and with a stable SLE. So this was really very homogene and a good population for our study on AMH. This study on AMH included 112 patients women, of course, and uh, they consisted in the 56 SLE women younger than 40 years old and exposed to cyclophosphamide, and to five, 56 control matched for age. AMH was measured in frozen samples, and all patients were interviewed in May 2012 regarding their obstetrical status. You can see, more or less, that the mean age was very young, 31 years old. As expected, women exposed to cyclophosphamide had more renal disorder, have all been treated with prednisone and immunosuppressive drugs, and were more currently treated with these drugs. Good news, they, sm they used to smoke less than the non-exposed patients. And the mean AMH levels was very low, 1.2 nanograms per milliliter, and was lower in non-exposed patients. Indeed, as you can see here, this level is really very low. I told you 5 nanograms at 25 years, and 2 nanograms at 40 years, and you can see that it was not what we would expect for a population of 31 years old. We had 80% of the patients with levels lower than 2 nanograms per milliliter, 
and a third of the patients had really very low level here. As I said, the mean AMH was significantly lower in patients exposed to cyclophosphamide and also in patients older than 30 years old. We then f so this is not new, but now we will focus on the probability of pregnancy. Here is a patient, she has an SLE, she may have cyclophosphamide or the match date for the control, and she is included in the PLUS study with uh, AMH measurement uh, done after. And then this is a follow-up and we interviewed them here. The median follow-up was of 4.2 years and 38 patients thought to become pregnant and 32 succeeded given a weight of 84%. Uh, they succeeded in a short time, seven months uh, as a mean. Regarding we also had uh, unplanned pregnancy, but that are not included in the study. And six patients failed. Regarding the failure, as you can see here, most of them have been treated with cyclophosphamide. We had other explanations for infertility in three cases. And so if we focus on the patients with premature ovarian failure, we can see that there were not so young compared to the other, and that they had received very huge doses of cyclophosphamide, probably because it was qu quite a long time ago. Their mean AMH was low for two of them, but not so low compared to the other patients in this one. Indeed, six out of 10 women with very low AMH levels had pregnancies without any problem, and 11 out of 15 with this level also had pregnancies. In the univariate analysis, the risk of failure was associated with cumulative cyclophosphamide dose and with older age, but not with AMH levels. And in the multivariate analysis, only cumulative cyclophosphamide dose was significantly associated with the risk of failure. Briefly, we also assess the probability of pregnancy after cyclophosphamide with a median follow-up of 12.4 years and with, we found that 91% of the patients uh, succeeded uh, in becoming pregnant, which is mm, the same rate as the one in the general population, which is around uh, 90%. In conclusion, AMH levels are low in many SLE patients and decrease also with age and with cyclophosphamide exposure. The likelihood of becoming pregnant was rel relatively high, with a weight ranging from 84 to 91 percent when the patients wanted to become pregnant. Success was observed even in patients with the lowest AMH levels. Failure was mainly associated with cyclophosphamide exposure and to a lesser extent with age, but not with AMH. So th these results are reassuring for SLE patients, and they suggest that low AMH levels may not be so predictive of lowest chance of pregnancies in SLE women, and that physicians, sh and that we, should be very cautious before using AMH levels to cancel our patients regarding their family planning decisions. I thank you very much. Uh, this paper is now open for discussion. Yes. Yeah. Sanchez Guerrero, uh, congratulations, very interesting paper. Uh, among the patients who received cyclophosphamide, I understand that most of them became pregnant, am I right? Excuse me, because we don't yeah. hear very well. Is it too um, Can you repeat the question? Because yeah, so yeah. Uh, only about six of the patients who received cyclophosphamide were unable to become pregnant. So, uh, do you have an estimate of the mean dose 
of cyclophosphamide that received these patients who were able to become pregnant even receiving uh, cyclophosphamide? I mean, do you have like a threshold or probabilities of becoming pregnant according to different doses of cyclophosphamide? Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, I can understand. We confirmed previous uh, studies showing that uh, the dose is also depending on the age because it's not the same at 25 years and 35 years, for example. But um, as you have seen, the amount of cyclophosphamide was really very high in the three patients that were had um, an infertility because of cyclophosphamide. The other patients received mostly 6 uh, or 12 grams of cyclophosphamide and had no problem. Okay. Now, let me ask you, how frequently are the obstetricians using AMH on women older than lupus patients? Are they using that to advise them or counsel them? I think it depends greatly uh, of where you are working. I, I think that I've seen in the literature, uh, the, rheumat the rheumatism literature, that it's, this is more and more uh, used and many are uh, proposing to use that to help us, but I don't think it's very helpful. I'd right. like to say just a few things. If you look at the obese patients, the big one, they have the same uh, follicles count on ultrasound than normal patients, okay, that uh, thin patients. It doesn't correlate with the weight, but they have very low level of AMH also. So a possibility would be that in SLD patients, these uh, levels of AMH uh, could be very low because of other reasons that we don't understand yet, but that they have a follicles count strictly normal. We don't know that. Okay, thank you very much.